grid-based pathfinding can be used a number of different ways, such as in tower defense games or for connecting randomly generated rooms and roguelikes. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the very basics of using ASTAR to create grid-based pathfinding. I have prepared a scene with a single tile map node that will store our obstacles. Defining a map size will prevent ASTAR from creating indefinite points. SetGet ensures that when the path start position or end position is set, the appropriate function will run. Point path will hold the tile coordinates before they have been converted to global coordinates. ASTAR nodes are only createable in the script, so we're defining one now. Get use cells by ID will get all positions of tile 0, and they will be set as obstacles. Half cell size will eventually be used to convert global positions to centered positions. These two if statements confirm that the new starting position is not an obstacle and is inside the map boundaries. If there is an end position and it is not equal to the start position, then a new path will be calculated. Set end position is pretty much the same as set start position. Points that are able to make a path will first need to be added to the A star node. Points in the obstacle list will not be added as paths are not allowed to cross them. Points array will hold all crossable points. These two four statements add all crossable points to the points array. You can only reference A star points with its index, therefore we need a way of calculating this index based on its position. This points array will be needed to connect crossable points later. This formula will calculate the point index based on the point's position. All crossable points need to be connected for them to be included in a path. Points adjacent to the point are called relative points. Points are then connected to all relevant points that are not an obstacle or outside the boundaries. The third argument tells ASTAR that this connection is unidirectional. Since these points will end up being connected in opposite order later, the connection will end up being bidirectional anyway. If any of these inequalities are true, the function will return true. The main purpose of this function is to convert the path for map coordinates, global coordinates divided by the cell size, to centered global coordinates, which are global coordinates plus half the cell size. Setting the path start and end position runs both setter functions. The recalculate path function returns the path and tile coordinates. Finally, it's time to connect it all together in the ready function. You can define whichever start and end position you want as long as they are global centered coordinates. Make sure to set the cell size before running. I had an error because I accidentally passed in the point as opposed to the point index in an A star function. But after that, it works fine. If you liked the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Or if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below.